I'd say this is the most layers of things I've sewn at once. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't even get the whole thing. I'm getting excited. I can fit in this and I'm a big guy, so this is pretty damn big. You made this? Hi, I'm Carolyn. Uh, we're here at Brooklyn Craft Company. I'm one of the owners here and this is Diana. I am one of the sewing instructors here at Brooklyn Craft Company. And we do all kinds of DIY workshops for adults here in Brooklyn. So we do all kinds of sewing, weaving, macrame, calligraphy, um, mainly all kinds of fiber crafts, um, but some art as well. So today we're partnering with Good Housekeeping to make a giant uh, human-sized stocking. And we thought that'd be a really fun project to team up for. So brought Diana with us today. We thought it'd be a really fun project to make come to life. All right, we have all both of our fabrics ready. Um, we were just figuring out how we were going to make a pattern large enough to make a giant stocking. Yes, so we didn't have paper quite big enough. We have taped two pieces together, and now we're going to draw the stocking shape directly on here to use as the pattern. We ended up just measuring out a square on our craft paper that we were using as pattern paper, and you know we looked at a few images of stockings found one we liked and just kind of sketched within that square to make sure it would fit. So yeah. we just round out the heel and then round up the toe. We thought a lot about how we wanted our toe to be shaped with the stocking. Never thought we'd have to think this much about it, but uh, <laughs> there's some different styles with toe shapes and stockings, so. Um, Getting the angle right. Yes, yeah, we, so that it would hang nicely. All right, cool, I like it. Okay, good, so. Um, so we have a stocking shape. <laughs> We were thinking about lining fabrics we could use. We didn't want to use the batting by itself. We didn't have quite enough of the exterior velvet fabric to line the entire stocking with, so we kind of tried to think about how we could make it work. And luckily, I had some green crushed velvet on hand. I had bought myself last winter to make myself a New Year's Eve dress and never made the dress. And uh, as any sewer knows, uh, you have a big fabric stash on hand usually yes. for projects that may or may not happen. So it was one of those times that hoarding the fabric really yes. paid off. So Always check your stash, yes. you never know what you have. Exactly. <laughs> I knew that buying all this velvet was a good idea. <laughs> Ultimately, we wanted people to be able to get in and out of the stocking. We knew we wanted it to be flexible while still being sturdy enough and have that nice lush stocking look. Right, yeah. and luckily we had batting because we do so many quilting classes here mm -hmm. and we just slip that right inside. So let's say this, this is the stocking, right? Yep. This is the inside, so we'll have like the green mm -hmm. and the red. Yes. And then we'll have red and red. Yes. Okay. The batting that we ended up using is uh, has an adhesive that gets ironed on, but um, when working with velvet, which is the fabric for the stocking, you need to be careful. With one of the velvets, we were able to use a press cloth to iron it safely, and the fusible uh, batting did adhere to that velvet. It didn't want to adhere to whatever materials were in the other velvet, maybe mm -hmm. some polyester or something right. synthetic that wasn't vibing with the <laughs> batting. We just made it work because <laughs> ironing didn't turn out to be the perfect solution. Since we were going to be sewing everything together at, into one giant piece in the end, we were confident it would stay yeah, we, well enough. We made sure it was sewn into the seam so it wouldn't go anywhere. With sewing, there are lots of like technical uh, rules that you should stick to, um, but with something like this, a jumbo oversized stocking, we uh, <laughs> just had to find ways to break the rules to make everything mm -hmm. work. One thing that came up was the faux fur we used. The, the nap goes a certain way, so if you push it up, it looks one way. If you push it down, it looks another way. We wanted it consistent, but we also wanted to make it work for the size of the stocking, and we just went for it. <laughs> we decided it wasn't important. Yeah. It's still, it's gonna be it great. It looks fabulous, yeah. <laughs> 
Hopefully no one will be judging the direction the fur moves. Yeah. <laughs> when they're yeah, getting, getting a dance getting, uh, a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we want it to be right. Okay, this is a nice clean edge, so I'm going to use it. Cool. I'd say this is the most layers of things I've sewn at once. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever sewn more, but we'll see how it goes. I'm getting excited. <laughs> we changed to the walking foot, which is something typically used in quilting or very thick fabrics, which this was. It was six layers. Most of those layers were slippery yes. velvet. <laughs> yes, we did a lot so. of pinning. We used a very big seam allowance, mm -hmm. so I made sure nothing slipped and um, we didn't want any holes in yeah. the stocking. Yeah. It was pretty fun. Yeah, I liked like I loved using all the festive colors and um, um, I love holiday projects. So and yes. I think we were saying the other day anything that's either super tiny or really oversized is extra cute. So Absolutely. I loved the uh, the jumbo aspect of like an everyday holiday decoration. So I'd do it again. Yeah, it's fun. I'm sleeping this. Keep cover my face. <laughs> Forward march. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, hello. Oh my goodness, we're testing its limits. <laughs> what? Oh, there we go, girls. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it makes me want to sit by the fire. It would make a great sleeping bag. It feels like a, a blanket. <laughs> I could. Feel, I feel like I could sleep in this. You really? made this? <laughs> Well, I want to keep it. I can fit in this, and I'm a big guy, so this is pretty damn big. It is kind of nice. <laughs> button.